I'm Jake Bruton and today we're at our Spring Valley Aero project and I want to share a secret with you. So the surprise that I have for you today is I wanted to let you in on a secret about our Spring Valley Aero project. We've filmed a lot of stuff in this space. Uh, we've filmed quite a bit of content here. And one of the things that we've never talked about is this house has one of the largest mistakes of my career in it, and it's my house. That mistake is uh, easy to explain, uh, difficult to understand how it got there. So this house was designed by Steve Basic, Steve Basic Architects. We work with Steve a lot. And we have R40 walls and R70 insulation in the attic, and we have R9 windows. We have a really good thermal envelope. And one of the things that you notice in this house is that we have concrete floors on the main level. They're gorgeous, they're polished, they're gonna look really nice, they'll be super durable long-term. So the plan called for a poured footing, uh, that came above grade and had basically what you would think of as a brick shelf, a notch in it. And on that brick shelf that actually points to the inside of the foundation, we have insulation on the vertical leg from the bottom of the brick shelf to the top of the wall, and then two layers of insulation underneath our slab that I'm standing on now. Meaning that that slab, that concrete slab, is completely thermally broken from the outside in every way. It doesn't connect to the outside, it only connects to insulation and indoor conditioned space. That will make the slab substantially warmer, it will also make it just more comfortable. So one of the things that you get in a traditional turned down slab where we have a footing board that then connects directly to the, uh, uh, to the slab is you're thermally coupled to the outside. So the first three to six feet of that slab around the perimeter of the house is going to be cold or going to be whatever the temperature is outside. And you could resolve that by insulating on the inside of the footing and underneath, but you still have that little bit on the outside. Uh, so then you'd have to insulate on the outside, which we sometimes put insulation on the outside of our house. I just don't advocate for it to be at or below grade. It eliminates your ability to inspect the foundation. Uh, it also eliminates your ability to ever inspect an insulation that's below grade. Now, I get the argument that if we put the insulation below grade on the inside of the footing, we can't inspect it, but it's also as protected as we can make it. It's inside the footing. So we don't want to put insulation on the outside of the foundation because it's impossible to protect and it eliminates our ability to inspect for things like termites or foundation cracks. So then if you have that traditional turn down slab, you have a thermally coupled slab, it's gonna possibly be a comfort issue. Well, so when we were pouring this slab, we were setting up all the, the forms and everything for this slab, I had to leave for a conference. And my concrete guy, who I trust, called as I was getting on the plane and said, hey, I'm gonna make a change in how we're doing this foundation. Uh, I think it'll save you about $6,000. And I said, Okay, I like, I gotta let you go. The planes tell me I have to turn my phone off. It stunk, like it was a bad time to make a decision. I should have just said, hey, you can't make changes to the plans, do it the way the plans go. I trusted him and uh, under, you know, he wasn't trying to do anything nefarious. He was trying to be an asset to our company. Uh, but the suggestion that he was making to save money actually cost us quite a bit because he then took our thermally broken plan and poured a thermally coupled turned down slab, a traditional slab. By doing so, we now have a thermally coupled slab with R40 walls. That's not proportionate, that doesn't make any sense, that wastes our efforts on our walls. So, I have to figure out a way to resolve this. We still want the concrete floors, we don't want to cover them up with something. You know, we could do like we've done at our hybrid house or at our prairie house era where we insulate and then we put subfloor and hardwood flooring or something like that, but we didn't want that. We wanted the slab. So our solution was actually quite elegant. I went around the perimeter of this first floor, went ahead and put down my uh, 
two by eight plus inch and a half plate that we use for our first plate. That plate captures the edge of our zip sheathing. All the way around, that gave us the dimensions of the room. And I squared that plate, I anchored it, I air sealed underneath of it. Then I built a small form on top of that. Uh, I, I built a six inch tall form, so two inches of insulation, and then uh, we're able to put um, four inches of concrete slab. And we poured a second floor inside that slab. Now that's a lot of work to get a concrete floor, but now we have a thermally broken slab. We, this slab sits on a bed of insulation and the insulation in the walls is able to turn down and come all the way down and connect to the insulation that's underneath. I now have essentially a raft of concrete. One of the interesting things about this, the house is designed with no load on this floor. So this floor is non-supporting in any way, just the perimeter that the plate sits on is supporting the structure. What we're able to do is delete all the steel in this slab. Now I know that sounds completely counterintuitive. Who would ever pour concrete without steel in it? But this slab is neither under tension or compression. It's just sitting and it's completely captured. It doesn't have anywhere to go. Uh, a couple of the bonus items that we found with this is I was able to step the two 14 foot wide patio doors, the front and back door and the door to the garage. I was able to lower them in elevation because we have a slab that's six inches lower than, or uh, we have a plate that's six inches lower than our slab and it made everything zero entry. So you wouldn't notice that anything is different about this house unless you were here during construction. So what does that mean from a cost plus standpoint. This is my personal house, but we're a cost plus builder. What would that be if we had that kind of a mistake for a client? Well, everybody that, uh, that I talk to or, or some of the people that I talk to think, well, cost plus means whatever cost the builder has in the project is yours. And I would argue that maybe there's a, a legal precedent that you could make that argument, but that's not how our company operates. This is a mistake, clients don't pay for mistakes. So if this were a client's house, that $6,000 that I had in re-insulating and pouring a second slab and all of the labor, you know, my time and whoever was here helping, all of that becomes my cost. It's not fair to push that to the client because they did nothing wrong. Uh, now, it, it sucks, it does. We make mistakes as builders, we make mistakes as people, we're not perfect. What's important is how you handle the mistake and finding the correct solution. And I feel in this instance, we found a great solution that we actually love the results of because we have zero entry doors that go outside. We were able to maintain our concrete floor and now we have a nice warm floor. Yeah, we didn't get it right the first time, but sometimes you make mistakes. Sometimes the concrete guy makes mistakes. Sometimes the builder makes mistakes. Sometimes the crewman makes mistakes. They happen. It's how you move forward that matters. So thank you for watching The Build Show. I wanna, I wanna remind you that we have a new video every week, but Wade Paquin, Brent Hull, uh, Matt Reisinger, and Steve Basic all also have a new video every week. And we want you to subscribe to that newsletter so that you get an alert to remind you to come and watch the videos. I'm really excited about the great stuff that's going up on uh, Build Show Network. And we wanna say thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Till next time, I'm Jake Bruton on The Build Show.